Our goal is to find out the secrets. We may have to turn down some lights. Our goal is to find out the secrets of health and longevity. Because once you unlock the secrets, then it's very easy to pass on the message. It's like a recipe for cooking food. Each of us in this room has the genetic capability of living well beyond 100. Each of us has made a dish for our loved ones and our friends and for holidays out of cookbooks and from our grandparents' recipe collection. And in each cookbook and each recipe collection, there's usually a picture of the finished dish. And the purpose of the picture is to encourage you to follow the recipes so your dish will look beautiful and, and inviting. And so we look to the recipe for health and longevity in the same way. Human beings require 90 essential nutrients. These are called essential nutrients for two reasons. Number one, our bodies cannot manufacture them. We must consume them every day, either as food or as supplements. Number two, if they're missing for any length of time, days, weeks, months, or years, depending on the nutrient, we get some collection of horrible, degenerative, and disabling diseases, many of which are life-threatening. We require 90 essential nutrients, 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, and three essential fatty acids. Fortunately for human beings, our food plants, our grains, vegetables, fruits, and nuts can take the energy from the sun, the carbon dioxide from the air, and a process known as photosynthesis to manufacture long carbon chains. And the plants take these carbon chains and configure them and manufacture them into vitamins, amino acids, and fatty acids. And even the person who eats very poorly can get some vitamins, amino acids, and fatty acids. But plants cannot manufacture minerals. Plants and minerals are something that work together, but plants cannot manufacture minerals. Two-thirds of the essential nutrients are minerals. Nutritional minerals do not occur in a uniform blanket around the crust of the earth. Minerals occur in veins like chocolate and chocolate ripple ice cream are gold and silver. Because two thirds of our essential nutrients cannot be manufactured by plants, the only way that we can guarantee that we're going to get them each day is to supplement with them. The standard medicine of the industrialized nations, including the United States and Japan and Canada and Australia and Germany and New Zealand and Switzerland, produces a dish like a recipe. We, we've been using the same recipe in the industrialized nations for over 300 years. And because of this universal recipe in the industrialized nations, we can identify a 25-year-old, a 50-year-old, a 75-year-old, a 100-year-old just, just by looking at them. And this is a pretty typical 85-year-old person, could be a man, could be a woman. They have Alzheimer's disease, they have cataracts and macular degeneration, and they're blind. They've lost their teeth because they have osteoporosis of their facial bones, it's called periodontal disease. They've had angiograms, angioplasties, and stints inserted into their arteries. They've had triple bypass and heart transplants. Their gallbladder's been removed. They've had their colon removed because of polyps and colon cancer. They've had their hips replaced and knees replaced. Their feet have been amputated because of the complications of diabetes. Ah! Ah, I'm very excited. I, I want to do this recipe when I get old. No, I don't think so. So what do we have to do? What recipe do we need to use to live to be a healthful 100-year-old? Let's look at money. If money was important, there should be a significant number of billionaires live to be 100. There has never been a billionaire lived to be 100. The average lifespan of billionaires is 78. So it's not money, because if it was money, there should be a significant percentage of billionaires lived to be 100. What about intelligence? There's never been a Nobel Prize winner ever lived to be 100. If intelligence was important, there should be a significant percentage of billionaires lived to be 100. There should be a significant number of Nobel Prize winners lived to be 100. And yet there's never been a billionaire, there's never been a Nobel Prize winner lived to be 100. What about fitness? What about health? What about athletes? There's never been a professional athlete ever lived to be 100. So we know that there's some other factor, because people do live to be 100, but they're not billionaires, they're not Nobel Prize winners, and typically they're not professional athletes. So four years ago, Blake Graham and I went to Okinawa. Uh, Okinawa, as you well know, is a part of Japan that is famous for long life. And so we went to Okinawa in hopes of, of finding the secret of health and longevity. And before we went, we, we read this 25-year study by 
a, a pair of identical twin medical doctors from Harvard Medical School, Dr. Wilcox and Dr. Wilcox. And they spent 25 years asking the people in Okinawa how many hours they slept each day. They, they took 25 years to ask them how many steps they took each day, how many calories they ate, and how much protein and how much fat and how much carbohydrates. And after 25 years, they did not have the answer because the basic recipe they were looking for is wrong. Even the Okinawans, who are the longest lived peoples on earth in the industrialized nations, who, who they, they live on the average to be 85. They don't have an average age of 100, yet they're the longest lived people in the industrialized world. So when Blake Graham and I went to Okinawa, we only went to ask one question. Because the medical doctors had asked all the questions. We went to the agricultural department and we spent time looking to see if the soil on the islands of Okinawa were unique. And we found out, no, they're not unique. It's just a red, sandy clay. And we started asking 100-year-olds, both men and women. And the question was, what, what did you do with the wood ashes and the rice straw ashes from your heating and cooking fires? And each man said, I don't know. But each 100-year-old woman said, ah, my grandmother told us to take the rice straw ashes and the wood ashes every morning from our heating and cooking fires and mix them in the garden. Now the wood ashes and the rice straw ashes are not just ashes. They're plant minerals that are left when you burn away the carbon and the fuel. And before written history, the Japanese people and the Okinawans have been putting rice straw ashes and wood ashes into their garden. They mix it in their food to make the noodles and the rice a yellowish orange color and taste better. They cut their salt with it, a hundred part wood ashes and rice straw ashes to one part salt. And this is one of the gentlemen we actually interviewed, Mr. Toguchi, okay? Does he look like he's 102 years old? No, to me, he looks like he's maybe 80. And several months later, after Blake and I interviewed him sitting in his house, uh, Newsweek went and had another interview with him, very interesting. And he, many years earlier when he was a young man, for 20 years had taught music in California. And he could still sing songs and play the violin on symphonic songs from memory at age 102. Obviously he employed a much better recipe than that man with the walker at the beginning of this talk. And so we have the recipe, we have a new recipe that will enable the Japanese people to set the example to a longer and healthier life. Every industrialized nation today uses electricity, natural gas, and propane for their fuel. And as a result, there's no more wood ashes and rice straw ashes left over for the garden and the food and the salt. So we must consciously supplement with them to guarantee our 60 essential minerals. So our mission is very clear, and that is to pass on this very simple message, this simple information, which is as true a fact as can be. And I thank you for being part of this mission. Domarigato. Banzai! 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 <laughs>